Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing an update video on the Ranger build. Obviously got Christian here since he's building this thing. We also have the owner Ryan here. You guys have seen him in the videos in the past. Let's take a look at this jacket you got on, dude. Yeah, first of all. <laughs> period, <laughs> period correct right here. So obviously Christian's gotten a lot of work done on the truck. I think it's probably best if we walk through kind of in chronological order on how you put things onto it. Uh, so where'd you start from the last video? In the last video, there was still the factory frame rail on here, right. and then the housing was literally just sitting underneath the truck, just floating on the jack stands, um, and that was positioned exactly where it needed to go. So after we filmed that video, the first thing I did was we cut the frame off, um, and you can kind of see that up in there if you want. Um, we cut that off, and then got the pivot boxes tacked into place just to get everything, all the lower links on the truck, and then I can kind of start like working up from there. Um, but to get the pivot boxes into place, I had to cut the floor of the truck out. So just not the back wall as much as it is now, but just the section of the floor, I just rough cut it with a plaza cutter. Right. And all this stuff will obviously get cut out more. Um, I'll probably end up cutting the floor somewhere to about here for now, um, at least. And then this will get all paneled back in with nice tin work and then silicon bronze all back in. So it's all sealed off, but um, so the, that, when it comes to like uh, cutting the frame rail, you did that before the pivot boxes were on there? Yeah. How did you decide like where you wanted to cut those? So I knew, basically like got the trailing arm, just swung up to the frame when the frame was still there, when the mm -hmm. axle was sitting there. Right. I knew where the kick was in the pivot box to like get it to come up over the frame. So I just took some measurements and then I knew kind of like where this, this is the kick I'm talking about. So where this kicks over right. on the, the pivot box here, I knew that's obviously where I needed to cut the frame out. So. It, it, it just took a couple measurements and then just kind of laying things out. But I did like first try pretty much, it was, we cut it right in the exact spot, so. Sweet, and then you can see here, this is still the factory frame rail right here and it's just cut off. For now. And then this new pivot box is welded on there and then you're gonna add some more kind of support there. Yeah, absolutely. So this, like this right now is literally just to get the pivot box in place so I could get the link geometry on the truck. Um, but the frame, like if you, it's it's kind of hard to see with all this in the way and even right. from under the truck with the trailing room on it, but the pivot box, the frame, the factory frame will basically be cut with the, the taper of the pivot box. And then it'll all like the pivot box or the factory frame will get boxed in as well. Sweet. So this is something that Christian had designed in Fusion 360, kind of set up off of all your kind of anti-squat anti-dive numbers that you wanted to achieve. Um, and then, yeah, you made it here. This was all plasma, right? Yeah. And then all this, press broke on Those the, were 100% done in this garage. On the, Sweet. Design, yeah. cut, bent, and then assembled and welded all here. Garage built, baby. Yep. Sweet. So once those were on there, um, obviously the rear end was located first, and then you got that um, tacked on. Which, yeah. And then it's kind of just assembling um, the upper links and trailing arms onto there. Yeah, so um, once the trailing arms were on the housing, uh, the upper link mounts on the housing side were already there from Camber. Right. So all I had to do was just connect the dots because the pivot box already, already had the upper link mounts built into it. So once the angle of the rear end was set where I wanted it, measured for upper link lengths, and then built the upper links for it. Sweet. Um, so once that was positioned, I'm assuming the next step was like figuring out where bump is so you can start with some of the structure? Yeah, so that that stuff I actually didn't, like this whole back section I didn't start on first. I started with the interior cab cage because okay. realistically okay. to like start on this back wall, I needed these tubes coming out of the cab. So that this was actually the first portion of it that I started on, getting this dash tube in was the very first thing actually. And then this, instead of doing, there's different ways you can do this area of a, of a cab cage on trucks. So in this instance, with just the space and the way that I wanted to do this, getting everything tucked as tight as possible, I went with the dash bar first as one tube that runs across the truck. Right. And then it comes and lands in the cab. So you can see right here, yeah, uh, that's it's, something, it's silicon bronze to the cab. That's something you don't see too often. Um, so the, to me, like, the only downside to doing it this way is you're not able to drop the cage. So that's the right. only downside yeah. to this, like actually, especially in this instance where I welded it directly to the to the cab. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted that nice, like tight look. Cause I, doing it this way, I do not, I've seen them where, obviously none of this is gonna be seen when the dash is off or on, but with the dash off, I've seen it where this tube will run across the truck and then it's just open-ended tube. Yeah, I see that. And it's too. just like, to me, that is not cool. Like, I don't like that. So. Well, this, like I spent the time to get this to fit very nice to the cab um, on both sides and then it's just silicon bronze straight to the cab. So it's adding structure sideways too. It might make it a little bit difficult like for if for whatever reason he does roll this truck at some point 
and stuff gets smashed, like this section of the truck may be difficult to, to work around. Um, but at that point, like all the, there's so much more yeah. to that at that but point that it doesn't even matter. The cool thing with doing that too, is you can start with the dash tube. So you yeah. literally just get that fit, tack it in. And then it also makes it easy because typically like this tube coming all the way up and out um, to the back of the cage is one piece. It's hard to make. And they get, yeah, to get all the bends perfect and to get it tucked as much as you want it to, it, it can be kind of difficult. So, so yeah, there, there's two points to that. So with the, uh, with making the dash tube first, like it was, this was making it simpler as far as getting two tubes, making this tube easier to get in for one, but also to get this tucked and this tucked the way that I wanted it to be. Uh, like the tube would have so many crazy, like there yeah. basically it would be impossible to do it, to get it this tight um, as one single piece going all the way through the truck. And with the Ranger too, it's already tight. So you want as much room yeah. as possible. So just getting those tubes tucked to the sheet metal as close as possible is the way to go. Yeah, that was my biggest thing in this specific truck being a regular cab. I wanted the absolute most room that you could get in this thing, even with the cage in it. And this is all two inch 120 wall mains. Yep. So two inch tube is already big as it is. And then fitting it in a, a regular cab ranger like that's just adding to a, it, you could have a bunch of problems with that so yeah. getting this tucked as tight as possible was ideal for me um just because i wanted him to be comfortable especially with a clutch pedal on his side yeah you gotta have i wanted room. there to be plenty of space you're not touching tubes you're not leaning against the tube and that we'll talk about this in a second too but that's why the b pillar is right. external on this thing so Sweet, so you started going on the cage on the inside. Um, you still need to add some of the stringer tubes yeah. on top. I, I just, all I needed was just this, the main structure in here to be able to get this tube out of the truck realistically is what it was, so I could start on the back wall. But the only reason the stringer, like these stringer tubes in the ceiling aren't in yet is because I was waiting for him to get seats, which we'll show in this video too since we have them. Um, I was waiting for him to get his seats so I could make sure there's enough head clearance because we were kind of, um, Kind of worried about these pivot boxes being as high as they are in the like truck pushing the seat up yeah pushing the seat up too high and then i was undecided on if i was going to run inch and three quarter or inch and a half or maybe even inch and a inch and um three quarter depending on what like the head clearance was mm -hmm. um but everything works out but there's plenty of head headroom in this truck so sweet so obviously dash is out to accomplish all that um you got the column in there you guys were talking about running kind of a different column now yeah right? one of the i did it ones okay like one of the shorty ones like the okay. stubby is that something that you can buy on like CarTech or like where you guys? Straight from I did it. Yeah, I think okay. Summit sells them too. Yeah. Gotcha. But yeah, like I did it.com has all the options and stuff. So, and the only the only reason we were thinking about doing that is because for one, this column doesn't it doesn't have tilt to it. Mm. So that doesn't like the Ranger the RF one hundred and fifty yeah, has tilt factor. I didn't, I didn't realize these that. Rangers they don't have tilt in these years. So it's fixed position, and then it's also way close to you. So we need, ideally, we need the steering wheel to come a little bit further yeah. away I from mean, him. You can tell just by looking at it. Yeah, I mean, well, obviously, it's, picture, it's gnarlier because there's When, no dash, when we had the seat in here, too, the seat, when you have that door open and you look through the door, yeah. the seat is in the door. Like, it's, yeah. it's not, like, tucked to the cab. It's in the door. So, like, you're, when he's sitting in it, it looks very comfortable, but the, the getting in and out and him just, like, the comfort it was just yeah. not there. Like, this right here is, like, it's not in my way all the like that bad but like with my knees you know but with like the i did it one to be like kind of just up here be up higher more yeah. vertical yeah so like all this would just be kind of flat wait do that again do it. <laughs> <laughs> man <laughs> sweet so once that started going you, you got the tubes poked out of the back drilled yes. all the holes and got that all figured out what was the process from there so once these are out of here uh, i got this secondary like kind of inline tube basically the belt line tube in here. Okay. Um, with this B pillar, like what we were was, just talking about. Once, how, obviously you didn't do this first, so. Yeah, it was. What do you, oh, well, how'd you get in there? What was holding it up? I had pi the pipe stand holding oh, it. Oh, I gotcha, okay. So the, the back wall is still there. Um, so this B pillar, just like a little backstory, this B pillar is external. So the top portion of it is outside of the cab, whereas normally on pre-runners or any off-road truck, the B pillar is inside of the truck. Mm -hmm. But again, this being a regular cab, I wanted him to be as comfortable as possible. I knew before the seats were already leaning up against the back window. So having a bunch of two inch tubes like in the cab back there, your head is just absolutely way too close in my opinion. So we brought the top of the B pillar is outside of the truck. And then the bottom of the B pillar basically from the belt line down is all raked back in. So you can kind of get like a side profile on it. Yeah. You can see it tapers back into the cab of the truck. Right. So, but yeah, I started with, with this belt line tube basically first, just ran it across the truck and held it up with pipe stands before I actually had the uh, the back wall cut out and then ran these these tubes down to it, ran the tube across, ran these tubes down, got all this structure in 
and then at that point like it could hold itself so i pulled the pipe stands out cut the back of the back wall out and then this bottom tube was um there as well so so yeah so you, you have your main junction kind of on the pivot box here and then a secondary one outside and that's mainly for the tube that's going to go like on the inside of the truck right? yes that runs along the floor right so that one will come um from the a pillar up here go along the floor line and then tuck back up into this joint right here yeah so all this this whole block of just factory cab right here on both sides this is all getting cut out too i just haven't cut it out yet because um obviously before they're like w when we cut the frame off the body mount got cut out of the truck too so the only thing holding the back of this cab up is the pipe stands underneath the cab on the pinch weld right um and this structure right here like you can't see it but it's all a whole box stand structure that's holding that pit that jack stand up so if i cut this section out now i can cut it out now because the cage is in but if i cut this out before nothing would be holding the back of this truck and it just fall yeah. so this all get cut out the tube will run down and then all the floor will be rebuilt back into all the, the tube work right so once you had those main tubes in, it was kind of just connecting all the dots with a bunch of stringer tubes in yeah. there. Yeah, I just like noticed, once I didn't see this before. You actually poke this out right here. Yeah, so those it's it's kind of weird. I de like this tube is it's not low because these outside tubes are tight as is tucked as possible inside of the cab as, yeah. as they can like be. You, you can't see you can't, you can't see, any, see any you can't even notice it from no. the side view. So it's it's, it's tucked as tight as it can be. But because this roof is crowned this way, and it's also crowned this way, the cent very center of the cab is the highest point. So like you can, like the cr being, having it crowned like this, this tube is obviously gonna be, when it's tucked tight, like how it is, yeah. it's gonna come up away from this tube. Yeah, you gotta dive it back down. Back exactly, yeah. Sure. So obviously the third brake light, the factory third brake light hole is here. This is gonna, it got cut bigger obviously for the tube, and then there'll be another stringer tube here, and another stringer tube here. So, and then once those two tubes are in and everything's welded, I can make a patch panel for this and silicon bronze it all back in. Yeah, sweet. Um, but, but yeah, once basically, so tubes coming out, like the straight tubes, everything that runs across the truck was put in first and then all the lacing was put in after that. Right, and obviously you're thinking about this as kind of your main node to kind of head, uh, for tubes to kind of head backwards. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're eventually gonna have one coming off here and you'll have yes. your shock mounts um, right in here. Yeah, so it's a lot of, I'll, I'll, like just because I've never done a back half on a truck like this before it's always been with a frame rail mm -hmm. This setup took a lot of like forethought just thinking about layout and how things are gonna be as far as shock clearance The width of the cage the height of everything where I want the truck to bump out at Like all those things you don't really have to think about when you have a frame rail that you're working off of Because you have set parameters already. Yeah, so this is like you're free to do whatever it's you want open palette Yeah, sure. so you, and you can screw yourself very quickly on layout and packaging if you don't think about everything 13 steps ahead. Yep. So um, so once you had kind of this back um, wall or the B pillar in place, mm -hmm. was this your next step was making this junction before you kind of did all this? Yeah, so since, since this is not being built on a fixture table or anything that I can like work off of floor wise, um, the axle I put, I knew the truck's sitting at ride height right now on the jack stands, like the cab of the truck, the front of the truck, everything's sitting at ride height. Mm -hmm. Um, so when the tires are on this thing, like how that side is on the ground, I know that's ride height. So I brought the axle up 14, right now it's 14 inches of up travel where it's sitting on the stands. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at the cage, there's, there's about an inch to an inch and a quarter more that I need to cut off. It's just right. there as a standoff so I can build off of. Right. And then that's tacked to the housing. But that will end up getting cut off as well. So realistically, this thing has 15-ish inches of up travel from ride height. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, this, this was the next step. So B, the B pillar got put in and then this section right here. So top tube, side tubes, and then these stringers, I built all this on the bench. Um, and then that was another thing like figuring out width here. Cause this is, this section right here is wider than this section right here, but this is wider to be able to fit the fuel cell behind. Right. So You're nothing right. is like bulging back out again. Yeah. I noticed that as well. You can see the kick on those tubes coming back. Um, and then like you said, that's just to match here. So those tools tubes will be able to come straight back off that and then it'll just perfectly encapsulate the fuel cell mm -hmm. and I like a lot of people do have the rear section of trucks taper they go wider behind right. where the, the axle is at which is fine um, in this case since we're gonna be running the spares like how that's set up right there with it standing straight up on each side or at least that's the plan as of now mm -hmm. I wanted this back section from that from the axle back like your fuel cell cradle I wanted that to be just straight straight back so the tires are straight with everything they're not kicked at a weird angle one thing I also noticed is you have this kind of, we'll call this, what do you want to call this? Yeah, it's, it's kicked off in an angle. What was your reasoning behind that? With the bump stop, 
landing in the same plane, the bump stop's gonna be landed off this tube. You want your bump stop to be angled, they're at an angle lean forward because your axle's swinging in an arc. So if your bump stop's straight up and down and your axle's swinging in an arc hitting it, when the bump stop is striking the pad on the axle, it's scrubbing across the bump stop. Right. So in this case, like the angle of this, it'll follow, like when the bump stop's sitting there and the axle swings up to hit the bump stop, it's landing in the same spot yeah. and it's not scrubbing it's like crazy. more in line with the motion of yes. it. Yes. Yep. Sweet. So tack that on, built all this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, what was, what was kind of anything you did after that or? This, like this, that's kind of at the point we're at now. Yeah. So the doing the B pillar, like another thing on this is like the layout of this, there's there's a bunch of different ways that this can this could have gotten done. I could have just done a big old X through the back of this thing or really like, like what a lot of people do too is they'll go from here down to here, then up to here, then down to here. Right. Um, just to add, which is good. Like you, you want something coming from this point. With this, I wanted there to be plenty of like back window visual, like you can see out the back window real well. So what we're gonna do is just, these tubes will be the only ones in the back the back wall here on the B-pillar, yeah. but it's just adding support. So if the truck rolls and it lands on this corner, it's putting all the load back through all of this um, and the corners are protected kind of where your, head, your head's at in the truck. And then in the center, it'll come from here and then split off and each tube will land in this junction here. Okay. And then yeah. obviously the miters coming from here will also land here yeah, as well. That I was just thinking about, that's gonna look really good. Yeah, so it's, it's, it, it would have been one of those things like regardless, something has to come from that center yeah. or else all these tubes in the roof are all just like a dead, yeah, you're just, a, well, you're just they're putting, a bunch of dead you're tubes. putting this tube just in a bending if you land on Exactly, yeah. So if you land on the roof, you flop this thing front top, like end over end and <clears> land on the roof, it's pushing everything down in, which is not good, so. Right. Everything, um, no dead tubes. I don't want dead tubes on yeah. everything. So the other thing, you said you got 14 inches of up travel from uh, ride height. Mm -hmm. Do you know how much clearance that gives you on the body or the frame rails um, when this I is I don't know an exact up? measurement, but I, my eye meter is working. So Your it's ocular good. meter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when you, like a lot of this stuff is like, when it comes to that, it's literally just visual, like looking at it and being like, okay, it's gonna work. Yeah. Um, I know from the bottom of the tire to the bottom of the frame rail, which is the lowest point on this thing, right. there's plenty of room. Yeah. At least like easily five to six inches. Yeah, just looking at it right now. You can and this is on a 35. Right so this is on a small tire, yeah. which is what the truck's gonna be ran on now. I'm setting everything up on this truck to run at least a 37. So at some point it's going to a 37, that ground clearance will be even more, like everything will end up being bigger. It's also your welds <laughs> have come a long way throughout the years. They look pretty bad or what? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'd want that on my truck personally. <laughs> Man, big old caterpillars? Man, no. But your your weld progression throughout the years is very evident. It, everything looks really good on this truck. Thank you. Yeah, it's a lot of just literally doing it. Like there that everybody asks me like, oh, what are your settings for welding? What like how are you doing that? What's your technique? It's like my technique is literally just doing it. I've tried every single cursive V, C, U, Z, whatever kind of pattern you want to do. It's literally just it's it comes naturally with time when like just from experience of sitting there with the hood on and welding like right. you you figure out what works specifically for you and then setting wise like everybody welds differently at a different speed at a different height from the gun like everything changes yeah. everyone's so, got their own preference for exactly sure. yeah. you just kind of got to figure it out um cool so with that out of the way um fuel cell is roughly mocked up mm -hmm. um at u-line height you know <laughs> gotta get that <laughs> that special <laughs> That tea can height, dude. <laughs> yeah, baby. Um, so this is kind of just um, roughed out, and then, like you're saying, tires, at least for the plan right now, are going to go um, one on each side of the fuel cell. Yeah. One thing to note as well is the last video we filmed on this what, was it last weekend or the weekend before? Two it's been, weeks ago. It's been two weeks, and Christian's hammered out all this stuff. So this truck's coming together really quick. Um, Don't jinx it, dude. <laughs> man, I'm trying not to, but um, yeah, super impressive. But should we check out the seats? Yeah. Like Christmas morning, dude. Not for me, but. <laughs> and you got the 492 up on though, just sitting outside. Man. It's fine, it's got a carport. Man. Dark arch juice? Dark. <laughs> no worries on it, dude. Man, I don't even want to touch that, dude. That's kind of musty. Start I'm, it, man. That's... I'm good off that. But, uh, yeah, this is this, is this guy's deal. You can get worse. What? Yeah, what do we got going with these seats here? You got some PRP <laughs> deltas. Nice. Um, so what made you kind of want to go with the seat? Uh, we were at Off-Road Expo and I just went to PRP's booth, found I think it was the Alphas and the Deltas. Well, you said, did, did you just sit in those two or all of them? Uh, well the other ones seemed like they were all like suspension seats, oh, and yeah, the other yeah, ones yeah. got like the gnarly helmet bolsters. Right. 
So, uh, it's kind of a good yeah, they're next to each other, and I just, I like this one better, honestly, but they're for a smaller size vehicle. Right. Yeah, they're so smaller than the Alpha. They really? ended up working okay. out, yeah. So have you, you guys already mocked them up in the truck? Mm -hmm. Cool. Got right. him, yeah, sitting in it, like seat position figured out, like all that stuff is good. Yeah, just nice hard shell seat. Yeah, um, hard shell. Uh, went with like a, it's called a beige. Honestly, it looked like just a little bit darker online, but <laughs> you know, it's all good. Yeah, these are super nice. I was gonna do black, but no, I, I like the contrast. The honestly, beige. I think yeah. the beige with, with the, the blue? blue. Yeah, with the blue looks good. And then we got the Gabron Fibre. Yeah. On the back. <laughs> yeah. Man, see. big baller, dude. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'll never see that. But, yeah. <laughs> They're cool. I like that it's removable. You know, if windows oh, windows good. down. Yeah, just to just take them home and dust yeah. them off. And Clean it off real quick. Yeah, it's all like we were when we were thinking about these seats too. We were going back and forth. I wanted to do suede on these, but he really wanted to do the um, the tweed. The tweed on yeah, these, yeah. and it it yeah it, it 100 percent makes sense because like he was saying, if he's cruising windows down and the whole interior gets dusty in this thing, suede is an absolute pain in the ass to deal with, like cleaning up clean up wise. Whereas this, you could blow these things out and they look brand new, just like our seats do. So. Yeah. Cool. Should we just throw one in there to see what it kind of looks like? I'm kind of curious. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, let's talk about them. Oh, uh, man. Yeah, they fit good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, from a side profile, the seat honestly looks small in there. Like, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, they look smaller. Like, and you, you guys were saying you want it really close to the back window. So, like, this is approximately where that seat's going to be Very located. Very close, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, like, I mean, depending on how the dash is designed, you should have plenty of leg room for yeah, a ranger as well. The dash before, like, protruded quite a bit. The dash that'll be in it once I make it will be actually like a little bit forward towards the the windshield quite a bit. Nice. Yeah, I think those are gonna work, work good. The one thing that you always see with Rangers too is the seats are touching. Well, that in the we were center, talking about that too. Like, and it looks like you're gonna, we gonna had, have a gap when he was having more we, room. Yeah, yeah. When we test fit him in the driver's seat, we put this one in here, mm -hmm. and like there's at least eight inches between the seats. Yeah, that's a lot. Usually they're like brushing against each other. Yeah. Sweet. So cool. Well, with that in there, um, is there anything else you really want to talk about yeah, as far as the current state as of affairs? As far as like progression goes, that's where we're at right now. That's going to wrap it up for this video though. If you guys liked it, go down and hit the like button. We got 500 likes on the last SolidWorks video. Christian says we should shoot for 650 on this one. So go down there, hit the like button. Also comment, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.